Previously, we talked about the biosynthesis of cholesterol, and we saw how complicated this process actually is. Well, now we're going to switch to the regulation of cholesterol synthesis, and we'll see that this actually is not very complicated. So, the most important thing you have to take away from this lesson is the regulation of cholesterol synth uh, synthesis occurs at the level of the rate-limiting enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. So, as we'll talk about all these different regulatory methods, remember this fact. To increase the production of cholesterol, we have to increase the expression of HMG-CoA reductase. To decrease the production of cholesterol, we have to decrease the expression of HMG-CoA reductase. So let's begin with sterile dependent regulation. So let's suppose within our body, specifically within the liver cells, we have low levels of cholesterol. If we have low levels of cholesterol, that stimulates the proteolytic cleavage of an important transcription factor off the ER membrane. So this is the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. And attached to this membrane on the cytosolic side is a protein called SREBP, which stands for sterile regulatory element binding protein. So when this transcription factor comes off, it becomes activated. It then quickly moves into the nucleus of the cell. And in the nucleus of the cell, it binds onto a section of the DNA known as SRE, sterile regulatory element. And once bound, it upregulates the expression of the mRNA that codes for HMG-CoA reductase. So the mRNA exits the nucleus, it goes onto the ribosomes, the ribosomes essentially create that enzyme, and now we have more enzyme to create cholesterol. And that increases the amount of cholesterol inside the cell. When we have high levels of cholesterol, so when we synthesize enough, this creates a negative feedback loop. So essentially there are intermediates in the cholesterol biosynthesis pathway, as well as cholesterol itself, that moves back here and inhibits the proteolytic cleavage of the sterile regulatory element binding protein. And so this will decrease the production of cholesterol. So this is the major way by which we can regulate cholesterol synthesis. Now, let's move on and talk about the sterile independent regulation. So sterile dependent means we're dealing with a binding protein. So we're dealing with the sterile regulatory element binding protein. But sterile independent regulation means we don't deal with this sterile protein. So HMG-CoA reductase is an enzyme that functions most effectively if it's not modified. But if we modify it with phosphorylation, for example, this will decrease its activity, making it inactive. So if we have a lot of ATP within our cell, the cell has enough energy to synthesize cholesterol. But what happens if we decrease the supply of ATP? If we, have low, uh, if we have low levels of ATP inside the liver cell, then all the ATP has been converted to AMP. And AMP, what it does, is it binds onto certain protein kinases and then activates this pro uh, uh, those protein kinases. And so by activating protein kinases, they can phosphorylate HMG-CoA reductase and that can make it inactive. So if we have low energy levels, low levels of ATP in the cell, that means we're not going to produce cholesterol. And that makes sense because if we have low levels of ATP, we want to use the remaining ATP for other more important important processes than producing cholesterol. Conversely, if we have high levels of ATP, then we're going to stimulate the dephosphorylation of this by these enzymes we call phosphatases. And so if we have a lot of ATP in the liver cells, we're going to produce a lot of cholesterol. Then we can also have regulation at the level of hormones. Specifically, the two hormones are insulin and glucagon. And glucagon. So in the fed state, so after we eat a meal rich in proteins and fats, for example, insulin is going to be released. And insulin does a bunch of things. For example, insulin stimulates cells to reuptake glucose from the blood, but it also actually acts on liver cells and other cells in the body to upregulate the expression of HMG-CoA reductase so that the cells can produce more cholesterol. So why would we want to produce more cholesterol? Well, if we intake a meal 
meal that is rich in fat, we actually have to be able to absorb that fat and transport that fat in the blood. And that means the liver has to produce lipoproteins. And one component of lipoproteins is cholesterol. So essentially, when insulin levels are high after the fat state, then we're producing a lot of cholesterol and that allows us to produce lipoproteins that can carry the fat that we absorb from our diet. Conversely, if we're in a fasting state, then glucagon levels are high. And this will turn off the expression of HMG-CoA reductase, thereby decreasing the production of cholesterol. So glucagon stimulates cholesterol synthesis, um, insulin stimulates the synthesis of cholesterol, but glucagon decreases it. And then the final thing I want to talk about are medications. And the medications I want to focus are, um, uh, are, are statins. So statins are essentially molecules that resemble HMG-CoA. And so what that means is statins are competitive inhibitors of HMG-CoA reductase. So statins are given to patients who have a condition known as hyperlipidemia, so essentially high levels of fats such as cholesterol. And by giving patients statins, we block the activity of HMG-CoA reductase that decreases the production of cholesterol within our liver cells and that stimulates something called the reverse cholesterol pathway. So we'll talk more about this later on, but very briefly, it causes the liver to actually absorb more cholesterol out of the blood and into the liver. And that decreases the levels of cholesterol and other lipoproteins within the blood.